Isaac, I play the hand horn and I'm here to give you a glimpse into my take on the essence of hand horn playing. In this video, I would like to give you an overview about the technical details you need to know when you're composing for the instrument. Whilst hand horn playing has existed since the 18th century, there's been a revival in hand horn playing in the past few decades and we always welcome new works that search for a new voice and explore new possibilities for this imperfect yet beautiful instrument. So let's get started. So beforehand, players play the horn without the right hand in the bell. As you can hear, there are large gaps in the lower register and as we get higher in the range, the intervals between the notes decrease. As a result, we see two types of horn writing, the triadic fanfares in the middle register and the diatonic scalic patterns in the upper range. Around the 1760s, Hamper was credited as the inventor of hand technique, where he inserted the right hand into the bell to correct certain notes and by the 19th century, horn players play with the hand in the bell by default. The right hand opens and closes the bell to various degrees which allow the middle register to become fully chromatic. When you close the bell, the stop notes are softer and the horn players compensate the unevenness in volume by playing the open notes softer and stop notes stronger. As a result, we can achieve various tumble possibilities on the hand horn. There are a few types of hand horns that we commonly use or seen today. Quite a lot of my colleagues in the continent play the baroque horn with right hand technique but there's also a transitional instrument between the two instruments that I'm holding right now, which is similar to the Baroque horn but with a larger bell throat. The corps de orchestre or orchestral horn, which has a larger corpus um, and a tuning slide, is possibly the most common instrument that we use today. It is worth noting that both of the horns I'm holding right now use terminal crooks where you insert the crook into a receiver. A cor solo, as the name suggested, is the instrument of choice for solos in the 19th century. They're really rare and most of them belong in collections and museums, but you can see it on my t-shirt here. The difference of cor solo is that it has a fixed lead pipe and you can change the crook by inserting different lengths of tubings into where the tuning slide is located on an orchestral hand horn. The court orchestra is the most common hand horn used in the present day, from students to professionals. So for the purpose of this video, I'll be discussing hand horn playing with this instrument in mind. A notable feature of the hand horn are the various characteristics you get from different crooks you use to play in different keys. So alto crooks like this one tends to be quite bright, volatile in that the open notes can be a little bit more unstable and certain stop notes cannot be played in tune effectively. With basso crooks like this one, they tend to be quite dark and takes a lot of air to play and it's like driving a lorry truck. Um, they tend to be quite muddy especially with hand stopping with the pitches difficult to be defined or heard. The crooks D, 
E flat, E, F and G are regarded as the most suitable for solo playing. When considering the ease of playing both open and stop notes, the crooks also lie in the range where the horn sings most beautifully. Some makers offer a more economical option, whereby you can have a master crook and you change the key by adding couplers to the crook to extend the overall length of the tube. The range for the hand horn is very similar to the modern horn, with exceptions that go lower and higher. However, the hand horn does have certain limitations I'll be discussing in terms of notation as red rather than in concert pitch. On solo crooks, this range is regarded as the best range for the hand horn where it is fully chromatic and clear. As you can hear, certain stop notes are a little bit harder to reach, but they are still reasonably accessible. From G above the line upwards, the notes are fully chromatic and from A onwards, you can play them as either open or stopped, but they are generally played as open. However, they are less accurate and are perhaps more accident prone. You should also consider stamina when writing in that range. To achieve notes below middle C, they require a mixture of manipulations through note bending with the embouchure and right hand technique. As you can hear, some notes are more convincing than others and A and B flat below middle C are generally avoided by composers. There is also a gap between E and low C and it is not advised to write anything containing those notes. The notes below low C are called factitious notes and they are produced by note bending. The right hand can also assist but they have little effect other than altering the timbre and volume. performance, we mainly use hand horns to play classical repertoire at A430. Most modern reproduction makers make two or more tuning slides for you to play at A440, A430 and in some cases A415. However, the hand horn is extremely flexible and you can get to different tunings and the more unconventional keys by using a combination of crooks, couplers and moving the tuning slide. In established hand horn repertoires such as Mozart, Beethoven and Galay as well as their contemporaries, they wrote horn parts in the key you crook the horn in and they did not specify what is open or stopped, so the technical execution was left to the performer. There were exceptions, especially in France, where composers would notate open on notes that would usually be played as stopped. In the case of Galay's unaccompanied works, where he did not specify the crook, the crook is left to the performer's decision and the performer will play the notes as written, thus the tone of centre will be different on different crooks. In contemporary works, 
there have been several different methods of notating microtones or natural harmonic tendencies. Some of the pieces commissioned for the International Natural Horn Competition in Bad Marsburg can be confusing when they inhabit in the sound world of the natural harmonics, and some don't specify whether the 7th or 11th harmonics should be corrected or not. In this instance, I would assume that they are corrected unless stated otherwise. The way of minimizing confusion is Ligeti's approach in his Humbert Concerto, where he used accidentals with arrows pointing up or down depending on the natural tendency of different notes on the harmonic series. John Croft extends this method in his works Une Altre Vox Crescente and Nocturne by using accidentals to reflect the microtonal nature of both works, and that includes using quarter sharps and quarter flats. Heinz Holliger uses a similar method in Indulken, but unlike Croft, he did not use quarter tone accidentals to notate, rather rely on arrows on flats and sharps, as well as open, closed and stopped signs to notate the various degrees of microtonal and ambiguous pitches he wanted the performer to produce. Whilst it is extremely detailed, I find Holliger's approach to be time consuming when trying to decipher his notation and hard to read when performing. So I hope this gives you an idea into the basics of composing for the hand horn. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or email me. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.